Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilab. Now, in today's lecture, what we would be doing is we would be moving on to the second uh, part of spectroscopy. This would be the part two. I have already talked about part one in that uh, we had discussed about the basic concept of what is spectroscopy and uh, uh, why we do that. Uh, so, but uh, in today's lecture, we would be going into much detail about what spectroscopy is and uh, how we can use this spectroscopy for our purposes, for our benefit. We would be talking about that. Okay, so let us start with a brief introduction about whatever we had talked about. I have drawn this diagram and it would help you out for understanding what is spectroscopy. So you can see over here, this uh, red thing is a matter uh, and any anything for the matter of fact, you can uh, consider this as anything. This is the matter, okay? So now whenever you are passing an incident light onto this matter, so this matter would be interacting with this light. It can either emit this light, it can either absorb some portion of this light in this diagram i have shown absorption over here emission over here some light might be able to transmit through this matter transmission some of the light can scatter and some of the light can be reflected back so these are some of the uh, things that can happen with the light that has been incident upon this matter so this is whatever we had talked about in part one. Now I would be talking about different types of spectroscopy as the as the series progresses. In today's lecture, I would be focusing on absorption spectroscopy and an application of that also. We would be talking about Beer Lambert law in uh, in today's lecture. Okay. So what is absorption spectroscopy? As the name suggests, whenever the incident light is interacting with the matter in such a way that it is absorbed, then this comes under the regimen of absorption spectroscopy. Now, different radiations or uh, you can say that radiations of different wavelengths can be absorbed by different matters okay for the matter of fact let us say that a peptide bond or a nucleic acid or an amino acid or a different kind of a protein or a carbohydrate might absorb different types of wavelengths of light right different uh, types of wavelengths of light but a given amino acid let us say it would be absorbing the light at a given wavelength Right? It would be absorbing at a given wavelength. That is what I'm saying that radiation absorbed at various wavelengths. That means different compounds, different biomolecules might absorb light at different wavelengths. That is possible. But for a given, uh, what do you say, compound, it would be absorbing at a given wavelength only. So selected wavelength intensity gets attenuated that means suppose what does attenuation means attenuation means to decrease in hindi kam ho jana bolte hain theek hai so what do i mean over here that whenever there is a compound and suppose let us say that it is able to absorb light at let us say 400 nanometer of wavelength then what will happen when you pass 400 nanometer wavelength of light this compound would be absorbing some of the photons of this particular light and therefore the intensity would get reduced do you understand my point so the previous intensity let us say was i naught now the intensity of the light that would be emitting out that would be uh, transmitted from this molecule from this compound would be lesser than that which which had collided with it that which was incident upon it so this is what i wanted to say over here so selected wavelength intensity gets attenuated that means intensity would get decreased when it interacts with the matter that selected wavelength 
uh, intensity would get decreased why because the photons would get absorbed because of the photons would get absorbed uh, of that particular wavelength i believe you would have understood this particular concept now let us understand about the plot uh, between amount of light absorbed versus wavelength the amount of light absorbed what is the amount of the light absorbed versus the wavelength gives you absorption spectrum it gives you absorption spectrum now this uh, graph or this plot is called as the absorption spectrum you should be well aware about this uh, next what information does this absorption spectrum give you basically it is giving you qualitative as well as quantitative information now let us just elaborate upon this now suppose there is an atom there is a molecule there is an ion whatever there is this is shown by this black dot now this is the ground state okay so i am writing g s over here so this is the ground state and this is the excited state of this whatever this entity is this is the excited state okay so whenever h nu what is this h nu this is the uh, light that this is the photon this is the energy that is being transferred to this particular atom this particular ion whatever it might be what will happen this would absorb the energy and it would be relocated or it would be pushed to a higher orbital higher energy state but you should understand this that not all the energy not all the wavelength not all the energy would be absorbed only that energy would be absorbed that would be related to the energy gap that is present between the ground state and the excited state i believe you would be able to understand this whatever energy the en only that energy would be absorbed that would be related or associated with the energy gap between these two orbitals okay suppose there is an energy gap of 100 uh, joules between these orbitals a light of uh, of energy of 100 joules would be absorbed so that this atom or this entity would be pushed up to a higher orbital i believe you would you would be able to understand this concept so that is why i am saying that not all wavelengths are absorbed only a given wavelength is absorbed by a given entity so this was the concept okay now what all different types of lights or what all different types of radiations electromagnetic radiations can be used so you can use x ray if you are using x ray then it the spectroscopy that uh, would be termed is called as x ray spectroscopy if you are using uv it would be called as uv visible spectroscopy it can also be called as infrared spectroscopy if you are using infrared so these are the different types of spectroscopies that can be made use of each of these has different what do you say each each of these has different mechanism of action you should be able to understand this that whenever we are talking about uv and x rays you see they are present if you if you uh, if you have an idea about the electromagnetic radiation spectrum if you know about the spectrum electromagnetic radiation spectrum you would be able to understand that uv visible rays are somewhere near 400 to 700 nanometers and on the left hand side there are higher energy electromagnetic radiations on the right hand side there are lower energy electromagnetic radiations on the right hand side the wavelength goes on increasing the energy goes on decreasing on the left hand side the wavelength goes on decreasing energy goes on increasing this we have already talked about in the previous lecture in 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 uh, just building up up building up upon that concept i'm saying that uv and x rays since they have a very high energy 
right they have a very high energy and when they would be striking a molecule when they are striking suppose this is the compound and uv and x-ray are striking on this compound what will happen they would ionize this the electrons present in this compound would move to a very high orbital they would get ionized okay so that is why i have written ionization happens when the re when the uh, the uh, the matter interacts with uv rays and x rays now let us come to infrared rays okay so if you remember the diagram again you would be able to remember you would be able to think that infrared rays have a lesser energy once they have a lesser energy then definitely they would not be able to ionize the matter if they are not able to ionize but they would definitely be able to do something what that something would be they would cause vibrations inside that particular compound that particular molecule so vibrations would be happening these vibrations can be used to study those molecules next microwaves again microwaves have further lower energy even lower than the infrared rays and this lower energy would is only enough to cause rotation okay so we saw ionization we saw vibration and then we are coming to rotation so depending upon the energy that is present inside uh, these uh, uh, what do you say these electromagnetic radiations we can say we can uh, we can understand what all effects can be caused right now let us uh, move on to the concept of spectrophotometer so spectrophotometer is nothing but an instrument i believe most of you would have worked upon the spectrophotometer it is just an instrument that helps you that aids you to measure the absorbance of a given uh, what do you say substance okay what amount of electromagnetic radiation a particular substance is absorbing you can understand you can uh, determine through spectrophotometer so that is what i have written instrument to measure absorbance of a given wavelength so what you do is spectrophotometer is a device you put in your uh, material whatever compound that you want to uh, uh, what whatever you want to study the absorbance of inside a cuvette so there is a cuvette it can be made up of quartz it can be made up of a glass material also so you fill up the cuvette and then not up to the neck a little lesser than the neck and then the cuvette has a transparent side uh, aligning the transparent side to the electromagnetic radiation direction you place it inside a slot that is present in the spectrophotometer and then the light electromagnetic radiation passes through the cuvette and in in this case what will happen the electromagnetic radiation it would be absorbed some electromagnetic radiation that is given at a particular wavelength would be absorbed by your compound that is present inside the cuvette and this absorbance would be determined by this machine so this is the simple principle what is the use of this depending upon the absorbance you can calculate you can determine what is the concentration of the material that is present inside your uh that is present inside your cuvette you can easily calculate the concentration once you know absorbance you can easily calculate the concentration this is very easy okay we will talk uh, about how you can calculate the concentration using a spectrophotometer some uh, some other time but i believe you would have understood this okay so how what is the diagrammatic representation of spectrophotometer so it is a light you have a light source and through this light source a white light is passed you might be knowing that white light is a mixture of vib uh, vib gyor basically v i b g y o r different lights violet indigo blue green yellow orange red so it's a mixture about it, it's a mixture of these lights and when this white light is passed through a monochromator now what is this monochromator monochromator is a device that would cut out the other wavelengths it would only allow a given a particular wavelength to pass through it that means that after the monochromator of just after the monochromator the light that is present over here that is passing over here this is a monochromatic light what does monochromatic mean mono means one 
chroma means color that means light of one color or in other words you can say that light of a particular wavelength okay so now this monochromatic light has an intensity that you call it as i not i zero okay so this monochromatic light has an intensity that you call as i zero and there is a sum there is a sample that you have put inside a cuvette and this sample has a what do you say this cuvette has a diameter of d okay so i have written d over here now just after the sample when this monochromatic light would be crossing this sample inside the sample would definitely be absorbing some kind of the i mean some amount of the light monochromatic light it would be absorbing some amount of light and the light that is passed on is detected over here by a detector that means you already know what light was passed that the intensity was i not now you know what light is striking the detector you would be able to understand or you would be able to find out what is the absorbance of this given light so this is the concept okay so i believe you would have understood the concept now coming to beer lambert law now this is an important application of absorption spectroscopy you should be able to uh, uh, understand this pretty well because this is extremely important a lot of questions a lot of numericals are asked from this concept only okay so what is beer lambert law lambert first of all these are two scientists so lambert's law and beer's law these are two different laws we would understand each one of them so what is B, what is lambert's law so lambert's law says that when a monochromatic light again monochromatic i have told you monochromatic light passes through a transparent medium okay intensity of the transmitted light decreases exponentially as the thickness of absorbing material increases this means that the absorption basically depends upon the thickness of the absorbing material more is the thickness more would be the decrease in the intensity of the monochromatic light that is passing through the sample okay so this was the lambert's law it is focusing upon the thickness of the material more is the thickness lesser would, would be the uh, le lesser would be the uh, in the i mean to say the, uh, the there would be an exponential decrease if more is the thickness there would be a higher decrease or uh, there would be a higher absorption of the light right more is the sample more is the uh, length more is the uh, this uh, uh, cuvette length there would be a higher absorption of the light and this would be in a exponential proportion not a linear proportion but an exponential proportion okay right so now coming to beer's law now uh, lambert's law was dealing with the thickness beer's law basically deals with the concentration of the absorbing substance now more is the concentration of the absorbing substance there would be a greater absorbance definitely their absorbance would be increasing as the concentration of the material that is present over here inside this is increasing there would be a greater absorbance so i have written over here is intensity of the transmitted monochromatic light decreases exponentially as the concentration of absorbing substance increases so we have written over here in terms of transmittance that means transmittance would be less definitely because as the thickness or as the concentration would increase lesser light would be transmitted more light would be absorbed this is as simple as that now the beer lambert law can be given by this uh, uh, term this this term there are other related formulas also absorbance can be given as log i not by i what does this mean log i not by i i over here or i not over here means the intensity of the incident light the light that is incident on this molecule the light that is incident on this molecule is given by the term i not and the light that is passing this is given by the term i 
so i not over here i over here intensity of incident light intensity of the light transmitted through the sample is i and therefore a absorbance is equals to log i not by i so absorbance can be given by this formula another formula for absorbance is epsilon c into l what is epsilon epsilon is the extinction coefficient or you also call it absorptivity coefficient c is the concentration of absorb absorbing material in the sample and l is the path length and path length is given in centimeters now absorbance you would have understood these are the two formulas for absorbance there is a formula for transmittance as well t is equals to i by i not remember over here there is no log value okay so transmittance simply can be written as i by i not this is transmittance another value that you should be aware about is percentage t percentage transmittance okay so percentage transmittance just simply means that the previous value of transmittance i by i not should be multiplied by 100 this would give you percentage transmittance or you can say t into 100 this would give you percentage transmittance now these are the formulas that would link up absorbance as well as transmittance so a is equals to log 10 1 by t what does how did this formula come up so absorbance and absorbance meant log i not by i transmittance is i by i not so it is just reciprocal just the log term is extra so a is equals to log 10 1 by t that means reciprocal of transmittance is absorbance right so absorbance is this or you can also write it because it is in the log format you can also write is write it as minus log base 10t because you can easily put a minus sign and you can Uh, bring the denominator to the numerator this these are the log properties i believe you would be knowing about this and then what you can do is you can also use percentage t over here simply write percentage t upon 100 this would cancel out again you would get log minus log 10 t another way to represent it is minus log 10 percentage t you can see you can write uh, minus log 10 uh, this 100 as you if you if you try and bring this up it would be minus log 10 base minus log uh, 10 100 this would give you uh, minus 2 value right so minus and minus would become plus so you can also write as write it as you can simply first of all write it as minus log 10 percent t and then again minus log 10 uh, uh, 100 minus minus would become plus and then you can write this simplify this because log 10 100 can be equal to 2 so 2 minus log 10 percentage t so this these are the some of the formulas that link up absorbance and transmittance so these can be of a lot of use to you another important so this was basically about spectroscopy in the next lecture i would be dealing with some of the numericals based upon the beer lambert law another important uh, uh information that i would like to give you is from the 17th of january we would be starting with the gat b uh gat b gate and csir net course from 17th of uh, january if you want to enroll in that course what you can do is you can message me on telegram or you can also write a comment in the comment section of this video thank you so much have a good day